Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Princess Renny here, and I hope you are doing well. On this channel, we talk about Christian faith as well as lifestyle and natural hair. Today is going to be a Christian based video. Um, I noticed when I did my Christian girl tag, if you haven't seen that video, I'm going to link it up here. Um, but I noticed that a lot of people have been asking me about the different books that I read, different books that I use for devotionals and things like that. So if you are interested, make sure that you keep on watching. If you're new to this channel, make sure that you also subscribe below and hit the bell button so that you're always notified whenever I post a new video. If you're an OG subscriber, we welcome you back. Thank you for rocking with me. And, and let's just get right into the video. So the first book that I'm going to um, mention is called Jesus Calling, 50 Devotions for Encouragement by Sarah Young. I received this book as a gift from my pastor, and I love it so much because every single day there's a different devotional that you can follow along with, um, different scriptures from the Bible, and then different things like words of affirmations that you can repeat to yourself throughout the day. It also has like a really nice um, like scriptures, like pictures that you can use as like an Instagram story, or you can post on your Instagram. Or any social media that you have, but it looks really nice. And um, it reminds me of those different um, images that you can create on the Bible app. So um, I really love this book because I can just open it up, go to a different day, and just have a word of encouragement to get me through that day. Um, if I feel nervous, if I feel anxious, if I feel um, worried about anything, um, this definitely encourages me. And I absolutely love this book. And just keep in mind that all the books that I'm um, mentioning, I will try to find the link so I can link them below so you guys can also get access to the books as well. The next book is Forgiving What You'll Never Forget. I actually bought this book initially as a gift for someone else. And, and for some reason, it just never got to them. So I was like, oh, I guess this book is meant for me. Um, but yeah, it just talks about forgiveness and it not only talks about it, but it tries to get to the root of the things that you like maybe dealing with that makes you unforgiving. Like, did you not have forgiveness in your life or do you know what that looks like? And it just like really digs even deeper into that. And I know that was supposed to be a topic that I was going to talk about, but I just, I love this book so much that I'm like, it says everything. So you might as well just get the book, you know? So this is what it looks like. Another book, I actually found this at the Dollar Tree, and I was really surprised to find it. It's called The Nine Fruits of the Spirit, and this one specifically is peace. And you guys know in this time, like more than ever, we definitely need some peace um, in this world, peace in our lives, peace in our situations, peace in this pandemic. Like it's just so much that's been going on in the world when it's at um, a chaotic state. You definitely need peace more than ever. And one of the fruits of the Spirit is peace. So once you have the Holy Spirit in you, once you are a child of God, um, one of the things that come out of you and the things that you also have flowing within you is peace. So peace that passes all understanding can make you laugh, it can make you smile, despite all the chaos that's going on in the world. And I really love this book because not only does it have the different things about the... <laughs> <laughs> Not only does it have the different things about like the fruits of the spirit, um, which specifically is peace, it also has different parts where you can write a response to the questions. That's really, really nice. So I love it, and this is what it looks like. All right, so up next, we also have God's Promises for Every Need, the New King James Version. And legit in this book, um, I received this as a gift as well. Um, it just talks about like the different names of Jesus, right? Or like what to do when you feel a certain way, what to do when you are filling the blanks and all the table of contents. So you can just follow the table of contents to figure out um, what scripture you really need for the day. And then when you go into it, it gives you like different scriptures about it. So like what to do when you are when you feel discouraged and then it has the scripture and it tells you exactly how um, you can continue to press on. So pretty scripture for you. Okay. Alright, so up next we have 
Yeah, and it's really nice. God's promises for every need. Another book that you guys have seen multiple times that I'm still working on reading is called Disciplines of a Godly Woman by Barbara Hughes. And this book is actually really, really, really nice. I would mark up the book, um, highlight it, all these different things. But it's just a really good book for young women. Um, I think it ranges from ages like, I would even say like 16 to like any other age. We're all young, right? So um, it's really good because it shares all the things that you need to make sure that you're disciplined as a young woman. So in your spiritual life, in your personal life, um, you know, at work, in your family, like everything concerning you, but also your relationship with God, it definitely shows you that. Definitely, if you haven't checked this book out yet, I recommend it. Um, and then now... Another book that I always recommend and I always talk about is Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. This book is really, really, really great. Um, and I just love reading it because um, it really talks about the things that um, a lot of people who are super spiritual um, go into, but it's not like a mature level of spirituality. It's just like, oh, this is how things should be, and this is how you should act, and this is how you should, like, you shouldn't share the things that you're dealing with, and you should sugarcoat everything and act like you're all perfect, and nobody's perfect except God. So understanding that, and understanding that, like, we are human and we're going to have feelings and we're going to have doubts and all these other things is number one important, but it's also important for you to dig deeper and like understand that hidden part and make sure that you are addressing those things because what's done in the dark will always come to light. So if you are holding bitterness or you're holding um, doubt or anything else like within you, uh, but you're over here putting on a face, like everything's great, eventually it will come out. And that's what the devil uses. He uses a lot of like the secrets and the things that you try to hide to expose you. So why not address those things so it doesn't come up in the way that the devil wants it to come up, but in the way that God gets the glory, you know? And you won't be ashamed. So. Um, another book, I actually don't have that book with me right now. I have two books that I don't currently have with me. One is called Draw the Circle, which I've spoken about before, where it talks about, it's basically a 40-day prayer challenge. And in that challenge, it, um, it prompts believers to take the challenge and pray differently. So it changes the way that you pray. And I remember one of the days it spoke about, like, um, when we pray, Sometimes we keep going back to God to check in and ask him. So remember this thing, God, or remember that thing, God, please don't forget this thing, God. And we're like expecting it at a certain time frame, but we don't, we're doing that because we don't necessarily trust God in his time frame. So it reminds us that when you pray, you seek God, knowing the person that you are, you are a child of God, you've received him as your Lord and Savior, so you are his child. Um, therefore, you can put it into his hands, you can speak life over that thing, as long as it aligns with his plan and his will for your life, you can speak life over that thing and trust God that it will happen. You don't know when it's going to happen, but you know that it will happen, and you just let it be. And that's what that book like really taught me. And of course, amongst other things, I actually loaned it to one of my friends and she's like obsessed, like obsessed with the books to the point that she's like, I'm going to write in it and I'm just going to buy a different version and like pass it on to somebody because we're basically passing on the book. Um, but yeah, I, was, I felt so blessed to know that one, she's reading it and she's enjoying it. Um, but also I have another friend that actually purchased the book and she is like amazed. Another book that I also passed on to another friend is called Relationship Goals by Pastor Michael Todd. And that book um, talks about like different relationships that we have, specifically our romantic relationships. But um, it also just talks about relationships in general, making sure that we are addressing those relationships and how they impact um, not only our relationships with other people, but also our relationships with God. Um, and then vice versa, how our relationship with God impacts our relationships with other people. Um, and then, of course, your relationship with yourself. 
So um, definitely also recommend that book as well. Another book that I have that um, honestly I never even thought of myself like having this kind of book for some time because at the point when I was given this book, I wasn't even thinking about that. Like marriage was the for furthest thing from my mind when someone gave me this book. Um, but it actually has some really interesting things in it. It's called 12 Questions to Ask Before You Marry by um, Clayton and Cherie King. This book is perfect for singles. It's also perfect for couples, whether you're engaged, just dating, um, you know, in courtship, um, and so on. So you want to make sure that you are actually reading this book in depth. It addresses some of the things with what the way that you um your religious backgrounds affect your um view on marriage your relationship with your parents affect your view on marriage um you know obviously as a couple whether you guys are thinking about having kids whether your families um the families like you guys for each other or they have other plans it talks about um some of the hopes that you have for your work and your career and all these other things and like when you make your marriage vows, you say until death do us part. So like, there are certain things that you just wouldn't know about a person. But if you read this book, you'll know what kind of questions you should be asking. And it legit has a section where it's just like, talk about this. Like, if you're in a relationship, talk about that. Like, there's a part where it's like, have you talked about money? Are you equally yoked? Have you communicated your expectations? Are you ready to marry an entire family? Because you're not just marrying that person, but it's their entire family. And it's just like so many things. So um, it really changed my viewpoint on like marriage to understand like, I always knew it was serious, but it was also something that I was like, not necessarily thinking about um, a few years back because it's just, just wasn't a thing I was thinking about. Like I wasn't there, but like um, my maturity level wasn't necessarily there, but also um i just felt like i was pretty young like to be thinking about marriage at that point but um this book is very very interesting and i recommend it to every young person whether you're male or female like this is perfect for you because you can really figure out what are the kind of conversations that you need to be having and another book is 31 prayers for my future husband um i believe that god has called me to start praying about this over a year ago and um i would start but not be consistent with it because i'm like well, what do i pray for like what does that prayer look like and you hear about like Ciara and megan good and all these um people that like prayed for their future husband and it's like well what does that prayer even look like well, this book has 31 actual prayers that you can pray for your future husband. So, like, you might not have an idea of how to start. This is the great starting place because then you can start filling in the gaps. So you can start, like, being more specific about the prayers that you have. Like, what are the things that you want? What are the things that you see for your future family? And just breaking the yokes and the bondage upon whoever your future husband is or your future wife. They have the other version for men. It's, like, 31 prayers for a future wife. And you just, it's just amazing. Like, there's one that talks about, like, um basically praying for him to become a leader um pray for him to be living with understanding praying for his maturity um but then they have like different challenges where you're like writing a letter to your future husband that later on you would show to him or another challenge where you're writing a letter um like taking some time to think like writing a letter about like to god to show all the ways that he has shown you love so that you can understand how god loves because a marriage covenant is like God's love for his people being shown between two people. At least that's what I understood from it. Like, your marriage should uh, portray the kind of unconditional love that God has for his people. So, this book is great because I just, I just didn't know where to start. Like, I felt like it was either redundant or, like, sometimes silly because I'm like, should I be praying about this? But like, what if God doesn't want that for me? But then it's like, well, what do you want? You know, so there was always that dilemma um, with, like, not knowing what to pray for. And, like, this book, like, solidifies it because it has specific prayer that you can say 
in regards to whatever that prayer request is. Shine with purity. And it literally says, Dear Heavenly Father, all of this prayer is everything that you need to say. And then, in Jesus' name, amen. And I love it. This is great. Now, we're going to move on to some Bible study and journaling. So one of the things that I have is the My Study Bible Journal. It's a 180 um, encouraging Bible readings for women. This is what it looks like. This book has been through it all, so please don't judge it. And so basically, inside of the book, depending on the scripture that you're reading, um, you go to that scripture. Um, you would read it, and then you would write down your thoughts about, like, maybe something that you learned, something that stood out to you, and all of that, and has all this spacing, so you can really dig deeper and study your Bible. So, it's really great for those that want to get a little bit deeper and study their Bible. Of course, I have the Holy Bible. I have the New King James Version, because I just feel like this one's a little bit easier to read and follow along with. This is one of the few like physical Bibles that I have, but I also mainly use the Bible app. I use like different plans in the app and things like that. So if you guys want to see like a weekly or a daily routine on like how I make sure that I'm in God's Word and studying a little bit, studying more, um, I can definitely do that for you. But um, I love having the physical Bible, but I also love using the app because it's just the convenience of it. I can use it anywhere and um, highlight certain things that I want to go back to and find it in a few clicks on my phone. So definitely recommend getting the book, but also if you can get the app as well, so you always have the Word of God with you. So here's some more Bibles. Um, <laughs> I also have the children's Bible, the Bible story for children, because I am a Sunday school teacher, so I have these two versions here. This is part one, and this is part ten in the series, and it just tells you all the different stories, like from the very beginning, and then um, after Jesus uh, was resurrected and he arose and went to heaven, um, it has the two different portions of the Bible. So all the amazing miracles that the disciples were able to do and the very beginning when God created the heavens and the earth and everything that happened. So I am super excited to get back in um you know children's church and Bible study and things like that with the young ones because this year with everything that's been going on it's definitely come to a halt. So I'm very hopeful and excited that next year will be the year that we can get back into God's Word together. So, excited. And, also, and this one, this is what it looks like on the inside as well. Also has these amazing pictures. So have the Bible for children, <laughs> which is awesome as well. And it just it's basically the entire Bible, and it has, like, all the different stories in it, and it also has pictures in it. So, yeah, I'm really excited because the kids are going to love it, and um, I can, like, share my screen with them and things like that. We're doing it over Zoom, but also in person, as long as we're being safe, and they just need God's Word. Like, they need God's Word, okay? And then I have the adult version of my Bible. It's the Inspire Bible, and it's the entire book of Psalms. This is also a gift from one of my amazing friends. I am in love with this. As you guys know, I am a worshiper. Um, I worship God all the time. I'm always singing. So um, even like during worship sessions and things like that, songs come to me and I am always worshiping. <laughs> so um one thing one of the things that I love about this is that it's one of those Bibles that you can color in. So I colored in this entire section, okay? The entire thing. Isn't that pretty? It's so pretty. And this is what it looks like when you don't color it in. So I chose not to do that because it's like the very first page. But like it has the entire book of Psalms, and as you go through it, like the first chapter, second chapter, like I would read it. Um, study the chapter and then um, color it in and then you can also write like notes on it and things like that as you wish which I absolutely love about this 
and you can write notes on the side, any bullets, anything that stands out to you, and all that fun stuff. All right, and then I also have a prayer journal. I think it's very important as a believer to have a prayer journal because being honest, there's times when you wake up in the morning and you just don't have the willpower to pray. Like, get into, like, the series. Like, thank you, God, for this day. Like, an entire, like, I don't know, 15, 10, 15 minute session. Um, even a five minute session sometimes is a lot. Um, <laughs> it's time in the morning that I wake up I'm like, thank you God for this day. I praise your name. You know, go before me and cover me. Um, in Jesus name. Amen. Like legit a selfish prayer and like straight to the point. And it's like, no, no, that's not okay. So, um, this journal helps me because I can go in and I can write down prayer requests. I can write down that literal prayers that I'm saying, like, dear father, like everything. I'm not going to show it to you guys. I'm looking for a blank page. But um, it also has scriptures at the bottom after you write, like, what your prayer is. It has, like, scriptures, like, all around it. It has, like, all these different designs and things like that. And I particularly like it because of the structure And so if you want to be like consistent with your prayer life, um, having a prayer journal helps because you can write down the prayer similar to this book that already has the prayers in it and you just like read them out loud. Um, you can write down whatever prayers you have and then you can read it out loud to God, whether it's in that moment or later in the day, or it's just like a reminder for like what your prayer request is for that day like okay let's say i'm praying and believing god for great results on an exam like i'm going to continue to think about that like you know what i'm trusting god it's in his hand and i know i could breathe free and not stress over that thing because i already put it in god's hands so i'm walking and i'm talking and I'm acting like i've already passed like it's already in his hands like i believe him i trust that and i just continue with the rest of my day and believe me and trusting god so um Having a prayer journal, having your prayer requests written down really helps um, me to, like, keep that frame of mind. Just like I know some people write down, like, affirmations or people write down um, things that they're grateful for for the day. It's similar to that as well. When you write down your prayer, this is where your mindset is. Um, of course, you can always add to it. Of course, you can always take a second or another minute and actually say a prayer to God throughout the day. Um, but I just think this is a great way because I can wake up in the morning and just write my prayer if I don't have like the energy to like start like praying. I also pray in the shower sometimes. Like sometimes that's just how it happens or like when worshiping in the shower, whatever works. Um, as long as you're making sure that you have that intimate time with and for God. And then now I have two of my awesome books. I think you guys have seen both of these, but this one says Forever Grateful. And this one says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. You guys know this is my favorite scripture, okay? But I have these two books specifically for um, my alone time with God. So in this book, I write down any revelation that I got. Like after I read a scripture, let's say, for instance, and God is speaking to me on how I can apply that scripture to my life, I would write it down here because I can always go back and reread it and remind myself, like, this is what God said to me. I need to make sure that I'm always reminding myself of that. And I can also write down anything that God has shared with me during my quiet alone time, any prayer requests um, that I may have or anything that God shares with me that I should know. Um, I write it down so I don't forget. Um, there's been a lot of times when I go back to this book and I get emotional because I'm like, you did that, God. You did that. Like, I knew you would do it, but to go back and, like, check it off, like, this actually happened, and I could put the date next to it that it happened. It's like the most beautiful thing. I need to find another of this exact book because I, I just need it. And I'm just going to put number one on this one, and then the other one I'm going to put number two. So I just keep keep going through it so I'll know that, like, where I came from and how far God brought me to. Why am I getting emotional? I don't know, but God is good, guys. God is good. And then... This book, I write down um, different scriptures that I have 
um, I write down what I've noticed in the scripture, kind of doing the soap um, method where you write the scripture, your observation from the scripture, the application to your life, and then a small prayer um, with like your Bible study sessions and things like that. Sometimes I just don't have um, the space in like, let's say my journal that I have for this one. Sometimes I just don't have the space. So I go in here and I write anything else that really stands out to me or anything else that I want to remind myself of from God's word. And it makes it even more exciting because I can go back into it. These are scriptures that I can um, share with you guys um, on this channel here. Um, different things that God wants me to share with his people. So I think that's all. So, um, this is also a giveaway video. I know it's been a very lengthy video, but it's also a giveaway video. I will be giving away, um, to one, um, lucky friend, I guess, <laughs> but I'll be giving away to one subscriber that's also, um, follow me on Instagram. Um, you will be able to get the relationship goals from Michael Todd book, as well as a, um, journal and the journal that I want to give you is going to be the prayer journal, as you've seen here. So that you can write down your own prayers on a daily basis, making sure that you're connecting with God as often as you can, because it's also very important, not only in this time, in the good times and the bad times, it's always important for us to connect with God. But I think um, it'll be a great way to reconnect, especially with the new year starting. Um, what better way to start off your year than building your relationship with God? You can start right now. You can start today. Um, but yeah, it'll be this prayer journal along with Michael Todd's relationship goals. I'm going to send it to one subscriber. So if you want to take one of them for yourself and share with a friend, you can. If you want to take both for yourself, you can. But I'm only going to be selecting one person. And this giveaway is going to end on Sunday, January 3rd. So make sure that you guys stick around so that you can see it. As always, to enter the giveaway, make sure that you are subscribed to this channel. So hit the red button below to subscribe to the channel. Also go over to my Instagram, make sure that you're following me there. Comment down below, uh, what are some of the ways that you connect to God or what are some of your favorite books that you have that help you stay closer to God? I would definitely love to hear some of your recommendations. Maybe there's some books that I can check out. Maybe there's some things that I can try so I can make sure that I am continuing to build that relationship with God. All right, guys. So thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, again, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Be blessed, spread love, and stay beautiful inside and out. Bye, guys.